okay uh, one of uh, also one of the most important topic in computer networks is actually finding shortest path uh, so it's known as shortest path algorithm all right and the algorithm that in computer networks which is the basis of all the shortest path algorithms uh, in computer networks is actually known as dijkstra dijkstra's algo a very powerful algorithm used by uh, a, a network layer on osi layer model uh, to route your packets to different places and also one of the key things that is being used in Google Maps, one of the variation might be used in Google Maps to find a location or to find your direction, shortest path direction between one location to one source to one uh, uh, destination. Uh, so this algorithm is quite simple and, and we're going to learn this today with respect to an example. So we're going to look at Dijkstra example. In this, we're going to draw a small map. Uh, let's take our map something like this uh, we have a starting point let's call that a and then we have different paths in the middle so let's say I have a path like this I have a path like this let's say i have five nodes node a node b node c node d node e and node f all right so this is my starting point let's call that this is my starting point or i can say this is my source and we want to find out the shortest path between node a and all the way up to node f all right or to e to b to d to c whatever it is uh, this idea of dijkstra algorithm came from something called graph theory and in graph theory every node or every entity is known as vertexes and the connection that are coming out from these vertexes like these like these like these these are known as edges so and and these edges are defined based on their weight so let's say let's take an example let's say it uh, define let's define the weight with respect to distance all right just for the sake of example like for example let's say if i want to go from a to b so let's say the distance i need to cover is four some four kilometers four miles four meters uh, whatever it is and here let's say three here let's say two one three four five and six some random distances are there we're looking at a dijkstra example in terms of a unidirection which means we're looking at only outward nodes that are coming out from each of these vertexes so for example if i were to look at it i have two paths i can go to a to b from a i can go to a directly go to a to b and then from a i can go to c all right so let me define with respect to arrows so from b i have two paths which are coming out which is this guy and this guy from c i have this and this from d i have this and this and then from f i have one path that is going out like this all right so uh, so we're going to look at outward edges like these the way i have defined with respect to direction what i'm saying is unidirectional that b can go to e but e cannot go back to b this is what i mean to say when i say unidirectional example uh, so the first thing i need to do is this so let's let's make a table of all the source so let's say you have a source let's say okay, i have how many how many how many uh, uh, nodes i have a b c d e f i got a b c 
D, E, and F. I have five nodes. All right, so my starting point is point A. So we'll start off from point A. Point A is this. All right, so let's say okay, if I am starting at point A and going to point A, did I travel any distance? No, I did not move a little, I, I did not move anything. I did not move any distance. So the weight is just going to be zero. All right, and I'm gonna put a small a just to denote where am I coming from. All right, so how many nodes, how many direct edges are sticking out from A? I have one edge that is going to B, then I have another edge which is going to C. Okay, so I have a direct edges. So from if I'm standing at A and I need to go to B, I need to travel a distance of four. So I'm just gonna simply write four, and I'm gonna write where am I coming from? What is the the node which is behind me, which is A? A to C is three. And I'm coming from A. All right. So let's look at node D, E, and F. When I look at node D, E, and F, when I look at node D, E, and F, they are not directly connected to A, isn't it? So the distance is just going to be infinity. So this is going to be infinity. This is going to be infinity. This is going to be infinity. Why? Because these nodes, rest of the nodes, are not directly connected to A. All right. So what is going to be the next? I'm going to put a box around it. I like this method better. It means this node has already been solved, so I don't need to look at it, look at it again. All right, these are my destinations. Point. All right. So which node that I'm going to pick now? I'm going to pick up the smallest possible value. I'm going to start solving this. So this is going to be three a now. All right, and three a is what? Uh, right now I'm at C, so this is at C. Okay, so I'm going to put a box around it because I'm solving this particular uh, node, which is actually C. All right, from C I can see I have two paths, direct paths. I have one path from C to D, and then I have one one path from C to F. Okay, C to D is two. C to D, C to D is two. Isn't it? There's a weight that is defined as 2. Okay. But where am I coming from? From the back. I'm coming from A as well. So 2 plus 3 is going to be 5. And I'm going to use this notation to define that I came from C. The direct path was actually C. Then I can also see if from C to F, I also have direct edge. All right. Which is 6. But where am I coming from? From the back which is 3, isn't it? So 6 plus 3 is going to be 9, 9C. Nine is there any other, oh, sorry, this is, I'm sorry, this is E. E will remain same, so 9C. This will still remain infinity. This is F actually. Okay, good. We're going to bring this 4A down. Eventually, we're going to solve for all different sources as well while keeping my des destination stationary. All right, what is the smallest value that I see now? Here. Yeah. This is going to be B because B has the smallest path. That so 4A, we're going to put a box around it. And we're going to see that how many edges are sticking out from node B. This 4A is from that destination B. So I'm, I'm going to bring this down here. Now I'm making this as a source. I'm looking at it with perspective of this being a source. I know there are two edges. One is B is going to D and then B is also going to E. All right, so let's look at it B going to D. B going to D, that's a distance of one, but where is it coming from? It's coming from four. And you get the distance is actually coming from A. So A is four, so four plus one is five. So I don't need to change it because I already have the shortest path. So I can leave this as is or I can replace it, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave this as is because the solution is also giving me the same number. Look, from B to D is one, plus 4 from the back, so it's going to be 4 plus 1 is 5, but I already have 5. So just leave that as is. And then from B to E, I have 3. Now B to E was infinity, so now it's going to change, and I'm going to change this to from B to E, it's just going to be 3, but where am I coming from? From the back is 4, so 4 plus 3 is going to be 7, and that is through B. And then do I have any direct path? 
to f no i don't have any direct path to f so i'm going to leave this as is what is the smallest value that you have found uh, you can find on this uh, row is 5c so i'm going to bring this 5c down and where this 5c is from d so let's bring this d out then put a box around it all right and then we're going to see how many nodes are sticking out so i have d to e I forgot to write down the weight of this. So let's say from D to E is 2. From D to E and then from D to F. All right. So D to E. Okay. D to E is 2. All right. But where am I coming from? 5 plus 2 is going to be 7. This is already small. I already got 7. I don't, I'm not getting anything, any value which is less than 7. So I don't need to change this. I hope you're getting it. Okay, from D, you got E that is coming out, and then you have F, which is also coming out. So from D to E, the distance is 2, but where is it that is coming out from? Is is actually uh, covering a distance. To reach D, it, it actually needs to cover a distance of at least 5. 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 2 is going to be 7, but I already have 7. I don't need to replace it, so I'm just going to keep bringing, keep, keep uh, this thing down as is. All right, let's look at from D to E, I have 7. And then from D to F, I have 4. Okay, 4 plus 5. 4 plus 5 is going to be 9. I already have 9, so I don't need to change it. So leave this as is. So let's bring, in this way, you're going to solve for all the sources. Okay, so now I have E, 7B. I'm going to put a box around because this is the smallest distance we have found so far. So this is through E. From E, I know there's no other edges which are sticking out. So I'm going to leave this as is. From E, you cannot see that there are no more edges that is sticking out. So E is going to be as is. I'm going to bring that 9C down. And I'm going to bring this 9C down over here. And this is through F. Okay. And there are no edges which is sticking out. Yes, there is. There is. Okay. It's 5. So, F has one edge that is sticking out, which is going to E. Okay. From F to E, I know I already solved it, but when I trace this back down, okay, so this is 5. So, you have to come with respect to 9 because if I want to go to E, I need to cover 3 plus 6 is 9 plus 5. So, 9 plus 5 is going to be 13. So, which is, I already solved it. I already got a smaller number. So, I don't need to change this to this value. So, I'm just going to put a box around it. So, how am I going to track this down? So now, here's, here's the good thing to do. Once I have all of this, now this is how I, I so I need to find shortest distance from A to F. All right, and to find a distance from A to F. Okay, I'm going to go to my F. So I'm going to write my F down. This is how I do it. So I'm going to, because I'm going to F. But when I look at F, what is the solved number that I have? That is actually, is coming from where? It's coming from C. So let's bring the C out, A, C, and then go to C. C is right here. C is coming from C, is coming from A. All right, so so let's let's look at it. So I got this value to be nine. So let's look at it. If I want to go to F, I've got I have to go from A to C, then from C to F. That would give me three plus six is going to be nine. I hope you're getting it. All right, let's do one more. Let's say you want to go to A to E. So let's find out from A to E. Shortest distance from A to E. So I want to go to E. This is where I want to go. So this is my E. So I'm going to bring this E out here. First, I'm going to write my E down. Then E is coming from where? From B, isn't it? I have a B here. So I'm going to write this B down. I'm going to go to B. B is right here. Then B is coming from where? A. So it's going to be A, B, E. A, B, E. 4 plus 3 is 7, and we got 7. 
I hope you're getting it. Let's say I want to go to D. Now I want to go to D. A to D. Find the shortest distance from A to D. Okay. I'm going to D. That's why I'm writing this D down. I'm going to D. Okay. So I'm at D. But at D, where is the solved graph? Which is this. It's coming from C. When I go to C, which is right here, the solve is A. So it's going to be A, C, D. So this is going to be A, C, D. A to C, C to D. 3 plus 2 is 5. We got 5 here. So in this way, uh, you can solve uh, Dijkstra. You can use Dijkstra algorithm um, to solve for the shortest path. Uh, so I hope you like the video because I'm going to replace this video with the previous video because the previous video was not that good of a quality. So I hope you like the video.